Hello and welcome to ILTV's Israel Daily. I'm Aaron Porras and coming up in today's newscast, Israel shoring up its southern defenses and keeping the roadways near Gaza closed for the second day in a row, as authorities are still expecting an attack from Islamic Jihad terrorists in the Gaza Strip. Meanwhile, Tel Avivians reeling from the second shooting on Dizengoff Street since April. And later, how long is too long for a shift at the hospital? Medical interns continuing a heated battle with health and hospital officials. The roads going in and out of Gaza, as well as most of those around the Strip, remaining closed on Wednesday for the second day in a row. This as defense officials are still concerned over the chance of an Islamic Jihad terror attack targeting Israeli civilians in the south. Some 100 IDF reservists now joining the ranks of active duty units taking posts near Gaza on Wednesday. This as the closures around the Strip remaining in force for the second day in a row following the arrest of Islamic Jihad's West Bank leader in Jenin. IDF forces disguised as Palestinians arrested the Islamic Jihad chief Basim Saadi as well as his son-in-law in a raid on Monday night. Saadi has been wanted by Israel for actively building up the Islamic Jihad's power in Jenin and elsewhere around Judea and Samaria. Also, several deadly terror attacks in Israel this past year attributed to Islamic Jihad. And Saadi's son-in-law, while not targeted for arrest in the raid per se, considered a high-value target as well, as he is Saadi's close aide. In any case, as tensions running high following the arrest, Israel concerned that the terror group may launch reprisal attacks against Israeli civilian communities in the Gaza periphery. So the alert level in the area has been raised, and all civilian vehicles are asked to steer clear of the area for fear of sniper fire or anti-tank missiles. That said, Israel also putting pressures back onto the Islamic Jihad, as well as onto the Hamas terror group which controls the Gaza Strip. IDF Chief of Staff Aviv Kochavi explaining that Israel's policy is clear. Israel will extend a hand to whoever wants to work and live alongside Israel, and Israel will smite whoever seeks to harm Israeli civilians and cause terror. Joining now with more on the southern security situation, former head of the Israeli Counterterrorism Bureau, Brigadier General in the Reserves, Nitzan Nouriel. Brigadier General, thank you so much for joining us. Now, the South is on heavy alert since Monday night. Reservists are being called in. What's your assessment of the situation? First and foremost, we need to understand that the reservists that uh, called uh, last night, uh, most of them belong to the Home Front Command in order to make sure that all the villages and all the civilian side are fully secure and they know what to do. We are not speaking about uh, units that may be uh, take operation inside Gaza. This is not the case at that stage. Uh, regarding the overall situation, I'm sure that uh, the Israeli policy is very clear. Hamas has the overall responsibility, and yet the Islamic Jihad from time to time do not listen to the Hamas, and they can take their own uh, way to uh, say we are, not, we are not happy with uh, what's going uh, with the Israelis uh, and us in Judah and Samaria, and we have something to say. And we all remember that in the Middle East, if you have something to say, you are mainly open fire. So the concept to be safe and sorry is also relevant to uh, this case. And therefore, we took all the steps in order to minimize the option of the other side to find targets and to load the profile of all the activities that are not really needed along the border. Well, so is Israel's sitting on the fence really deterring any terror retaliation from Islamic Jihad or any other group? Or are the Islamic Jihadists just waiting for the right moment? Sitting on the fence, meaning that we are not taking action, and this is not the case. The no, case no, is well, that we well, do take I, action. I, sorry, I, I, maybe, perhaps I misspoke. Sitting on the fence, I, I uh, intended to say that Israel is building up its forces on the, on, on the outer edges, on the borders of Gaza. Uh, so is that, is that creating a real deterrent 
against Islamic Jihad, or is, is Islamic Jihad maybe just biding its time? The Israeli deterrence uh, versus Gaza, based on few layers, it's not only one action or one element. Mm. Uh, and yes, I believe that after the last operation in Gaza, uh, the Hamas leadership realized that uh, fighting with us may cost them very high prices. Is this enough? Is this for good? The answer is no. Deterrence is something very tricky. When it's not longer relevant, it's too late. So you have to maintain it. And that's the, that's the way we do. We maintain it by increasing the defense capabilities. We maintain it by providing some benefits if they stay quiet, like allowed workers come to work in Gaza, in Israel, from Gaza. And as I said, it's a set of tools. Uh, and yes, I believe that the Gaza leaders, mainly the Hamas, do not want to have any uh, clash with us. Regarding the Islamic Jihad, they obviously have a different agenda. Therefore, Hamas need to take action against them, which they do. Surprisingly enough, Hamas invests a lot of yeah. efforts to prevent Islamic Jihad from taking actions. Uh, so I believe that right now the Israeli policy is the right policy. On one hand, to make sure that we don't have casualties in the Israeli side, and therefore we took some uh, steps like closing the roads, shut down the train in this area, and so far and so on. On the other hand, uh, the other side know and see uh, the Israeli overall capabilities in case of they uh, will make a mistake. So, all right, now you mentioned, of course, Hamas and the operations that Hamas takes against Islamic Jihad. And we've heard that Hamas and Fatah, for that matter, have interests in keeping the calm and allowing Islamic Jihad to be weakened. Uh, you know, how does Hamas fit into the conflict along the Gaza border at the moment then uh, and, and against Islamic Jihad and terror in general? We need to define between three different, uh, let's say, visions that Hamas uh, has at that time. For the very short term, he needs quiet borders. He wants to uh, recover. He needs to be able to provide the people of Gaza what they need. We all remember that uh, Ikhya Sinwar lost the last elections. And it's not a joke. In the Middle East, it doesn't matter who votes. It's matter who count the votes. And they count the votes three times uh, in order to uh, declare victory. And Ikhya Sinwar knows better than anybody else that he needs time in order to provide the people of Gaza whatever they need. In the midterm, the Hamas want to control the Palestinian Authority. They want to control Judah and Samaria. Well, so By the way, this is one of the reasons... Well, I was going to... By gonna, the way, this is one of... Uh, I'm sorry, I was just going to Go press... Ahead, I was just going to press a little bit on... Uh, if Hamas has recovered since the 2021 war, uh, Guardians of the Walls, you know, because we know that they're stockpiling arms again near civilian buildings, including schools and hospitals, even UN facilities. Recover meaning uh, that uh, on one hand, you probably right. increase or renew your uh, military stock, but on the other side, all the infrastructure are still very poor. Mm. electricity, water, things like that, that Hamas understand that you need to provide to the people of Gaza. All right, Brigadier General, thank you again so much for joining us. Thank you very much, sir. Bye-bye. A shocking incident now. Shots fired Tuesday evening on Dizengoff Street in Tel Aviv, one of the city's primary hotspots. Thankfully, no injuries have been reported, and the shooting is not believed to be terror-related. The second shooting on the Tel Aviv High Street of Dizengoff since April reported Tuesday night. The last attack leaving three dead and at least half a dozen wounded when a Palestinian terrorist indiscriminately opened fire on the patrons and staff at a bar. Contrary to the last attack, though, this latest shooting not believed to be terror or nationalistically motivated in the least. Rather, early investigations suggesting a criminal motivation as two suspects pulling up on a motorcycle and opening fire on another man in a car. And the apparent target is a resident of nearby city Bnebrak with an extensive rap sheet, including extortion, illegally growing cannabis, and violence. 
the target himself even having already spent 22 months in prison. Regardless, police still looking for suspects thought to be armed and on the loose. Two possible suspects were initially detained but later released when it was made clear that they were not involved. Will your children grow up Jewish? It all depends on their education. For more information about an Israeli scholarship, scan the QR code here.